What's up ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be covering why the Honda Magna is overheating. I took it for a ride the other day and it started getting hot on me. I don't know why, but today we're gonna to figure out exactly why that is, or at least doing some troubleshooting, trying to figure out how to diagnose an overheating issue on a motorcycle. So let's go ahead, roll the intro, and we'll get right to work. So before we get started, I just want to let you guys know, an engine can overheat for a variety of reasons. Uh, in this case, this engine is a liquid-cooled engine. Uh, it does not perform exactly the same as an air-cooled engine because those re rely solely on the air that passes over the engine to keep it cool. Yes, this engine has the fins on it. This helps extract the heat from the engine block to kind of help it stay cool. but this really doesn't do as much because these bikes or this engine is designed to be in traffic sitting for a while. Whereas, you know, you have like a dirt bike or something, you're not sitting still because you're out there, you know, ripping it up, having fun. So all, got, all that air is passing by the engine, keeping it cool. Um, but anyway, on these engines here, uh, the liquid, uh, a liquid cooled engine, um, I notice that when I'm sitting still, uh, the engine starts to overheat. So that tells me that the liquid side is not working like it's designed. So what we're gonna do is I'm actually gonna go through each component and try to test each one and figure out, you know, which one is not doing its job. It could be, uh, it could be a variety of things. It could be one, it could be two, it could be three things going bad all at the same time, causing the engine to perform this way. So uh, the, the first thing I wanted to let you guys know is uh, while I was riding, I did check on the pipes and there is no steam coming out the exhaust pipes. Usually when steam comes out the exhaust pipes, that means that you have a blown head gasket. That's the number one thing that I dread the most and it's, it's not doing, thank God. But if you had a blown head gasket, that means that antifreeze is getting inside the, the cylinders and it's, it's burning off and as steam and it gets pushed out the exhaust pipe out the back. So if you ever have white smoke coming out the exhaust pipe, chances are your head gasket's blown. In this case, I'm not seeing any of that coming out here. I'll fire up the engine here in a few after I run a couple more tests, and then we're gonna check to see if the head gasket's bad. I'm also gonna put a compression test on here and check out the compression on all four cylinders to make sure that the uh, head gasket is still in good condition. Um, but let's backtrack from head gasket because I would have cheeks myself. Uh, usually the first thing you guys want to do on a cool engine, okay, don't do this stuff when your engine's hot or otherwise you're going to hurt yourself or really burn yourself, um, is you're going to want to check the, uh, the, the coolant level in your reservoir, which would be, you have one in your car, but on here it would be my radiator. I've also got a, a reservoir that's up under here, but that's more of my overflow. But I want to check my radiator and see what the fluid level is on that. So let's go ahead and check that out and see what it looks like. So let's start with the radiator and we're going to check the fluid level first. So before you begin, uh, on every radiator, um, you really should have uh, a radiator cap. Um, if not, then they're usually sealed off and then they have a reservoir on the car. Uh, and those actually have, uh, they got warning signs on them. If they say danger guys, just heed the warning, okay? These things get really hot and they are under pressure. So if the engine is, uh, is hot to the touch, don't touch that. Leave that alone. Don't even try to like crack it because if you do, all that pressure is going to get out and it's like steam and it will burn your hand. Ask me how I know. So like I was saying, <coughs> this engine's ice cold. So we're gonna go ahead and pop this off and I'm gonna take a look. This is a brand new cap, by the way. So if the radiator cap is bad, it'll also leak out the front of your, your radiator and all that crap. But luckily for me, uh, this was one of the problems. I did swap it out for a brand new one, so that one is good. 
Uh, down inside here, it's hard to tell. Um, and, oh man, y'all ain't gonna be able to see. But uh, hang on, let me. You know what? I got a new tool to show you guys. Um, yeah, let, let, let's get started with that. Hold on just a second. <clears throat> All right, this is my first time messing with one of these. And I've known I need it. I've known I've needed one of these for a while. But let's go ahead and take a look inside. See what's going on. It's hard to make out whatever's what. There we go. All right, right there, you're looking at the radiator fins. This thing is difficult to work with. Let's back it up. There's a drop on it. There we go. What I'm looking at, or I'm looking for is uh, like a calcium buildup. And that's what I'm thinking is flow is my problem. So let's go ahead and shoot straight down to the bottom. This is it. Ah, you see a calcium buildup on the sides? Here's your fins. I don't know why it's doing that. But that is build up, ladies and gentlemen. There we go. Look at that build up. What I'm thinking is that I got junk inside my ra my radiator. Look at all that. That's crazy. All right, so let's go ahead and bring that back up. Yeah. So that that's what it tells me is I've got junk inside that radiator. And I didn't expect to have that. So that could be a problem. But that's why I got this bore scope. All right, let's in, let's investigate other issues and see what we have. All right, so now that we've determined that the level in here is actually low now, after I've, I filled it up once before, uh, that tells me that the system's working right. It's pushing fluid up inside. Um, also using the bore scope, looking inside there, we are able to see some calcium buildup. So that tells me, because this is the only, uh, part I haven't swapped out or haven't really managed to work on uh, which I may end up doing I'm gonna try something with that but uh, that tells me it's possible I may have a calcium buildup in those fins which is preventing proper flow that's that could be a contributing factor um, this is your thermostat all right uh, we're gonna fire up the bike here in a little bit and uh, I'm gonna top this off again and I'm gonna to check to see if I've got flow. But before I do that, we're gonna check this over here. Um, this is going to be, you know, put you guys up here on the tripod. All right, uh, I wanna test this right here. This is the, uh, the temperature sensor for the radiator. This is connected directly to uh, the, uh, the radiator fan. So I wanna to check to see, is that radiator fan even coming on? Now I've already checked this and I checked, I wanted to see if it was going to actually work. So uh, I went ahead and I cut a, a small section of wire. Uh, all you really need to do is turn on the key and connect this wire to ground or to the chassis. But as long as you hit it to ground and that fan should automatically turn on and it'll be loud. You'll be able to hear it. 
So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to unplug it. Okay, you got your prongs in here. Stick this bare wire inside there like this so. All right, then we're gonna turn the key on. Key's on, and the fan should automatically kick on as soon as I touch it to bare metal or, or, or ground. Right here. Perfect. So the fan is working. Um, now, if the fan doesn't kick on like it's supposed to, then that the next thing that, that's going to point is a bad sensor. If this sensor is not picking up the right temperature, if it's letting this thing get way too hot before this opens to turn the fan on, then the sensor could be bad, causing your engine to overheat. So now that I've determined that I have a low level, I got calcium buildup inside these fans. My fan works, that's good. Uh, I don't know if uh, the fan's gonna turn on when the engine's running. Uh, I will have to get the engine up to temperature in order to make sure that the fan kicks on when it's supposed to. Uh, but I've got a feeling that, uh, that, that it may not be doing what it's supposed to do, otherwise the engine wouldn't be overheating. Uh, so anyway, uh, the next thing I want to try, I really want to check out while the engine's cold, is I want to use my borescope. I'm going to pop out all of these spark plugs, and I'm going to look at the condition of the top of each cylinder. This will determine or write off uh, a possible uh, head gasket uh, being blown. <laughs> I want to write that off the list. I want to mark it off. I don't want that to be my problem. What I'm looking for, whenever I stick that borescope, uh, down inside of the cylinder uh, of the spark plug hole is I want to look at what does the top of the piston look like. If the top of the piston is all black with carbon, it, that's good. I mean, it's bad, but it's good. It tells me that I've got a good burn going on inside. I'm going to check each spark plug to figure out what's going on with those and I see their operating condition. Uh, whether it's burning too lean or too rich, which I'll tell you right now, this side of the bike is too uh, too lean. The other side over there is too rich. Uh, but I want to check them all out. I want to check to see if the top of the cylinder, if that piston is clean. If it's really clean, that's not really a great sign on an engine that's got 20,000 miles on it. All right, uh, That tells me that some of the coolant is making its way inside the combustion chamber and it's basically, uh, it's breaking up all that carbon. It's steam cleaning the top of that piston because fluids don't compress. And whenever you're using a piston to compress, uh, you know, the air that's inside that cylinder for an explosion to happen, well, those molecules, they get compressed as well, which they act like little hammers. They, they break apart that carbon on top of that piston. And then the superheat of the explosion, uh, that liquid turns to steam and it goes out to your exhaust, which creates a white smoke. So what I want to see is, is my coolant in my engine steam cleaning the top of my cylinder. So I want to check all four of them. I want to see their condition and, uh, and we'll go from there. Uh, the only other thing that I can think of that might be going bad with this is, uh, is two contributing factors to why this engine's overheating. Lack of flow, which would be in this case, uh, with, because of the calcium buildup that's inside this carp or this uh, radiator, which I may either try to save it with uh, some CLR, or I'm just going to go buy a new one. Okay, I'm at a point where I'm just I'm just going to buy a new one. Uh, I want to check to see the uh, the flow of the uh, the water pump, make sure it's working like it's supposed to, which I'm pretty sure it is. We're going to check that whenever I look inside the the radiator. For, uh, for flow, I want to see if the fluid's flowing around. And it also let me know that the thermostat opened up like it's supposed to. But uh, the only other thing that I can think of that could be helping this engine uh, get hot quick is uh, my carburetors being out of sync. Uh, because if the carburetors are letting both of these cylinders go too lean, it's actually superheating the, uh, the, the engine casing of the cylinder itself, because it's too lean, and the other side being as rich as it is, 
well, if it burns too rich, if there's a lot of fuel in there, fuel acts like a coolant to an engine. So it'll cool that side of the engine. So what I'm thinking is be, not just because of lack of flow, but my carburetors being out of sync are also accelerating the heating process on the engine. So both of these together are causing my engine to overheat. I know it's, it's a lot to comprehend. I've been thinking about this for the past couple weeks and uh, I wanted to walk you guys through this as quick as I can uh, and as thorough as possible, especially using a new tool, uh, the bore scope. So uh, I'm gonna go through now, I'm gonna run out there and get my stuff and uh, we're gonna pull these plugs and uh, see what the top of the cylinders have to say. So I got the bore scope all set up and I got you guys over here on the uh, the time lapse. But I pulled out cylinder two. So let's take a look and see what's going on inside there, shall we? So, so far the outside looks okay. I got some debris in there, but that's all right. But what I'm looking for is the top of the cylinder, top of that piston being covered in carbon and that one is that's good I can't get it inside because the camera itself is as big as a spark plug so it won't go any farther so that's good I like that so I'll save that picture can't get it inside there because that's as far as it'll go that's what she said <laughs> but that's good for me all right let's move on to the next cylinder this is cylinder two so this is two three four no two one three four i think that's how it works i don't know don't judge me so let's look down inside there. And that one is also loaded with carbon. So that's good. All right, let's move on to the next one. That's another good one. It's a lot of carbon. All right, well, that cylinder is good. It leaves us with uh, just one left. 
And hopefully that turned out to be pretty good. We're going to find out. And that's what I want. Perfect. Doesn't matter how much I rotate that. All the cylinders look good. That's excellent. They all got a whole bunch of carbon on the surface, which is good. That tells me that I do not have a blown head gasket. Fantastic. All right, let's put all this back together and move on to the next step. Now that we have established uh, that the head gasket does not seem to be steam cleaning my pistons, let's see if I can get some steam or some white smoke coming from my exhaust pipes. Let's go ahead and fire it up. Let's see what happens. This is a cold start. See that vapor floating around in there? So I do have flow. That, but I, I should not have any flow in that right now. That thermostat should be closed right now. But it's, it's not hot at all. It's, it's still... So I may need to address that too. bubbles or nothing so that's good but I'm looking for flow though that idle is all over the place and it's mainly because my carburetors are out of sync so I'll probably do that on the next video it's hard to see but I'm trying to look for flow able to get out all right let me shut it off what I'm thinking is uh I think my carburetor not cover uh my uh radiator is clogged it's just not allowing for flow and uh I can't really let it run long enough to turn the fan on but still, I don't think that's going to be an issue because already you can see that when I topped off the fluid, it was when I would run it at a higher rate, it was pushing the fluid up here 
which if I had the cap on there, it would push it up inside here, inside the overflow. So there's pressure being built up by the water pump, which is good, but I think there's a restriction inside my radiator causing it to overheat. I think I may have found one of my problems. So let's go ahead and cover that up again. I hate dealing with antifreeze. Just can't stand it. So, I think I'm going to leave the video off right there. Uh, this will be like part one of two. Uh, but I think, like I said, that, that my radiator is going to be my one of my main issues. Because uh, I haven't changed it. It's the original. So, uh, turn that off. Um, that idle is all over the place. I'll need a... Uh, I gotta sync up the carburetors and I got a carburetor syncing device over here these gauges so I'm gonna do that on another video but uh, I don't have a head gasket problem that's good there was no steam coming out the exhaust pipe so that's a plus all my plugs are in good shape these on on, on the left side were were rich I'm sorry uh, they were lean and the ones on the right side were rich as you guys were able to see that but uh, so far, I mean, I'm, I'm going to stop my video for right now because this is going to be a long video anyway. Uh, man, I really wanted to get more of this done, but I think I'm going to have to stretch this over a couple of the videos, which is uh, kind of disappointing. But that's fine. That's fine. It's fine. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, troubleshooting the Honda. Or the magnet trying to figure out what's going on with it I got a couple leads on it I know sort of what's going on with it right now uh, I think my next step is uh, going to be taking the radiator off I'm not sure if I want to go buy another radiator or take this one off and, and just let it soak in the in CLR and see if that happens or see what happens I'm probably just gonna buy a new one and slap it on here uh, clearly I may end up even buying another thermostat for this bike too because uh, those are the two components that I just cleaned up and put back in the bike but I didn't I didn't check the bike was cold and there's still flow coming through that coming past that thermostat so I'm thinking it's possible that thermostat may be stuck and it's not opening up all the way so I'm probably gonna buy a new thermostat and the radiator to kind of see if that solves my problem um, also the uh the sensor on the side here this is like a five dollar part i'm gonna replace that too so i'm going to go ahead and go online i'm gonna buy a new sensor new radiator and a new thermostat the thing that goes inside here so and hopefully that solves my my overheating issue and uh and then later on, I'm just going to go ahead and address the uh, the carburetor sink issue at a, at a later time. So, anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video as much as I had making it. Uh, I want to give a huge shout out to my uncle for being my sponsor for the GoPro 9 footage that I've been, I've been able to do. Um, and I do believe that is going to be uh, going to be it. So, until next time, y'all take it easy. I love you. Goodbye.